Board of Trustees voted to name Dr. Carrie Healy our next president, knowing that with her entrepreneurial leadership and powerful global network, she can boldly lead Babson at this pivotal time in the college's history. We are privileged that Carrie is returning to her roots in academia full time to serve as Babson's president. So it is with great pleasure on behalf of the trustees of Babson College that I would like to introduce Dr. Kerry Healy, the next president of Babson College. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for that kind introduction, and thank you to all of the trustees who've given me the honor of becoming Babson's next president. I notice I didn't mention which president that would be, uh, I, but I'm, you can call me superstitious, but I'd far rather be known as Babson's first woman president than Babson's 13th president. So we're just going to go with that. Um, and I'm also excited to be the first woman to lead Babson as the number one school in the world for entrepreneurial education. It's a wonderful institution, and I'm so honored to be here today as its next president. Welcome to Chai with Manju. We are honored to present a lady who is the first woman president in almost 100 year history of Babson College. Under her leadership, Babson College has ranked globally as number one in entrepreneurship. Diversity has improved and for the first time, women outnumber men in the classroom. Let us meet Kerry Healy. Welcome. Hello, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming to the show. And um, so let's start at the beginning. Um, education has played a very important role in your life and you are no stranger to struggle. Your uh, mother was an elementary school teacher mm -hmm. and you were only 15 when your dad had the massive heart attack. How have those early years influenced you and led you towards your current role as president of Babson? I think my mother was a wonderful role model for me throughout mm -hmm. this time. Right now she's 91 years old and mm -hmm. she's at the end of her life now, but I, I have to say that I think back on the strength that she showed during those years. She was the sole support of our family during those years and women uh, in elementary school education at that time in Florida were paid almost nothing. and. Uh, even with a master's degree. She was really at the bottom of the pay scale. And so the fact that she was able to hold our family together, that she was able to take care of my father, uh, even though he was not able to work again for over 30 years, wow. she took care of him and supported the family. So I, I respect her so much, and she showed great strength and, and perseverance. And her values were such that uh, I understood that it was important to have self-discipline, to put the family first, mm -hmm. and to make sure that your, you know, your own needs uh, were there, but they weren't uh, the, the, the dominant concern. That's wonderful. And I saw one of your interviews where you talk about when you told her you were going to be the president of Babson and what was her reaction? She was, so, she she was yes. so excited because uh, she had grown up gr during the Great Depression on a citrus farm. Uh -huh. her, uh, her father had become a citrus farmer after there was no business for him as an architect. <laughs> and, um, and so she had a family business. Uh -huh. And her father really, she was an only child, her father really wanted her to be able to, to take on the family business. Okay. And her, his dream for her was to go to Roger Babson's right. College for right. Women, which was mm -hmm. the first business school ever established for women, which was called Weber College uh, down in Florida, but they mm -hmm. didn't have the money to do it. So she thought, well, I didn't get to go to uh, a Babson College, but, but now you'll be the head of one. And she asked you to pick whichever college you want and then you'll make it happen. Maybe? She did indeed. She did indeed. And, and if you think about the selflessness of that at a moment when really we lost all of our money because of uh, my father's illness uh, to hospital bills, mm -hmm. um, we had no health insurance at that time for him. Uh, you know, she was struggling to get by, but she never wanted to put any constraints on what I could achieve. And she believed, you know, as a first generation American, she believed very strongly in the American dream and this notion that if you work extremely hard and get a good education, that absolutely anything is possible for you. So here I am, you know, a small child in Daytona Beach, Florida. We know no one, we have no contacts. We, you know, we're just trying to get by. But her view was that my career and my life prospects were unlimited 
as long as I got a good education. So the one thing she was never going to limit for me was where I could go. And when I got into Harvard, she said, you will go, we will figure out how to pay for it, even though the uh, annual fees were more than her annual salary. Very inspiring. It was very inspiring. And you know, to this day, I'm deeply committed to creating scholarship opportunities for talented young people around the world because I know that everywhere, in every situation, there are people who could change the world for the better. Absolutely. And you just have to figure out ways to get them to the institutions and the opportunities that can allow that to happen. It's why I founded the uh, Global, Global Scholars, Scholars Program uh, here at Babson as the first thing that I did. Uh, during my inauguration address, I announced that we were going to have at least 10 global scholars each year. And of course, I ask for more constantly. <laughs> but, uh, but the idea would be that someone could literally walk uh, you know, out of a village with nothing and come to Babson and have the tools that they needed in terms of enough uh, economic security and enough support uh, to, to mm -hmm. really succeed and, and reach their uh, greatest potential. And this past year, mm -hmm. we had uh, two giving circles uh, come mm -hmm. out of India uh, oh, to, really? uh, uh, to empower two Indian students to become global scholars for next year. And this is an, this is an incredible thing. Uh, mm -hmm. This means that 10 of our parents and our alumni have come together uh, to communally fund mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. education of one mm -hmm. student over the course mm -hmm. of four years. And uh, they'll also be there as mentors and hopefully to help them find internships and a job in the long run, to be that, that family, that extended family that maybe that student doesn't have. So I'm very proud of that and very Abs excited about it. Absolutely, and I think Consistently, Babson is ranked as number one in entrepreneurship since you became president in mm -hmm. 2013. This is wonderful. Well, and for 20 years, I can't yes. take full credit for this. <laughs> yes, yes. We should say this is our 20th year of yes. ranking number right, one. Right so. after Money Magazine yes. also came out in yes. 2014. So um, apart from Global Scholars, you have so many other contributions like entrepreneurship, entrepreneur in residence also since mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. right? Anything else you want to share about your contributions with our viewers? Well, I think what I think I would like to think that I have mm -hmm. made the college very welcoming to not only international students but also to women, as you mentioned. Absolutely. Um, but but to focus a little bit on the international uh, piece of it, um, we have all, over 600 international students um, out of an undergraduate population of mm -hmm. 2,200. And so uh, this incoming class had 29% uh, international yeah. students, and there's another 10% of students on campus who hold two passports. So altogether, it's almost 40% of our students who have That's this amazing. very strong global connection. And they're from 82 countries. They're not all from one country. <laughs> we have, uh, <laughs> India does uh, provide the, the largest group of yes. our international yes. students, 15%. Um, right. But at the same time, literally, 81 other countries are, are yeah. represented and so the interaction on campus between the students from these different countries is um, extraordinary because our, our graduates want to be entrepreneurs globally. Yes. Yes. They want to have those connections in every market and to really understand mm -hmm. the thought process, the backgrounds of how, how do you do business in every culture. Right. And so we're able to provide that. And you have so many programs, the BRIC program, you know, where mm -hmm. the students go to China, India, mm -hmm. Uh, and yep. Russia as well. We're, we're, we're very proud of the fact that we have uh, well over 50% of our students participate in uh, international programs during the course of the time here, whether it's a quick program over uh, winter break or whether it's a semester or even a year abroad. Mm -hmm. um, even our international students do international programs uh, at Babson because the world is large. It's not just where you so come from and, and, and here. There's a lot of other places out there. And so um, it's possible to come here and have just this extraordinary uh, array of international uh, experiences with some of our professors who are so passionate uh, about the places that they uh, teach and, and represent. I have to say that the bond with India is so, has become so strong. During my last visit to India in Mumbai, I heard Babson name everywhere in business family. Oh, I'm so glad. It was to like hear that, the yeah. kids wanted to. Do, I think and it's a word of mouth as well. With the, if the older children are going, the younger want to go to Babson. Yeah. So you really, look, you know, made a big bond with the Indian community. Well, we've, as well. we've made a big push. You know, three yeah. years ago, I was able to visit Delhi and Mumbai mm -hmm. and to meet with our um, alumni yeah. there, and I was just overwhelmed with the hospitality. I have to tell you, I didn't eat for a week afterwards <laughs> because you know, everywhere, everywhere I went, someone was like, "Oh, here, try this, <laughs> please." Eat this. And and it was uh, it was just wonderful to see the the passion yes. and the excitement. 
Um, and all of the various mm -hmm. uh, in industries and, and initiatives that all of our alums are involved with. And so I had the sense that we were ready to take off. And yes, I know absolutely. that our, our dean of uh, gra the graduate school, Will Lamb, has been back to India many times okay. uh, since then. And we've been reaching out. Uh, you know, Ben Shavrat has visited uh, okay. a number of schools as well. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're making a concerted effort to, to, to tighten those ties. Music to our ears. <laughs> so that brings me to uh, the Boston, the Babson India Symposium. This is the second year you're doing yes. that. So what's special about that? Well, the thing that's special about all of our symposia, uh -huh. and we have all kinds. We have okay. very long-standing ones uh -huh. focusing, for example, on Latin America or the environment or investment mm -hmm. banking. But this is new. So the uh -huh. India Symposium is new. And they're all student-run. These are not things that the college organizes, but you would never know. If you go to the India Symposium, mm -hmm. it's going to be one of the top conferences. You could go with you know, incredible leading figures yes. in Indian society yes. and in business. And our students do such a great job. Uh, it, it gives you a sense of how um, industrious and ambitious they're going to be in their life that they can pull this off at such a young Absolutely. age. The so. lineup of speakers is even is so amazing, and it's on. Friday, March third. Yes, right? Friday, March third. So March yes, 3rd. so be and and I believe that it's available online as yes. well. So yes. if you can't be there in person, please you know please look at it absolutely uh, online. And we're we're so proud of them. So we uh, we we are looking forward to hosting all of these distinguished uh, Indian okay. uh, entrepreneurs on campus okay. and. Um, are you We're gonna excited. make it an annual event now? Well, it's not up As to me. Students, right? It's the right. students. It's up to the <laughs> students. But I see absolutely no yeah. waning of interest in this, and and with the great number of Indian students on campus, absolutely. this should be, you know, one of our premier events, yes. right alongside the Latin American Forum. Yes, we met some of them. They're very excited. And very serious. <laughs> very yes. serious and very accomplished. Now. Um, uh, as we talked before, you are the first woman president mm -hmm. in Bob, uh, in Babson. It's going to be 100 years in 2019, mm -hmm. right? Do you think that having a woman president has encouraged more women to come to Babson? You know, it's impossible to know. No. <laughs> it's impossible to know. But I was so excited. We, by accident, uh, uh -huh. two classes ago, ended up with 53% women in the class. And and that wasn't something we were selecting uh -huh. for. We simply uh, admit the best uh, qualified students who come to us. Uh -huh. And the idea that there was uh, such a great pool of women applicants that year made me feel fantastic. So um, it's very unusual for business schools to even approach being 50-50. Uh, in terms right. of our gender balance. Uh -huh. um, so to see us, even for a moment, tip over onto the other side, right. that, that made me very it's proud. It's gonna be 54%. Yes. <laughs> I think the last one was 47%. Yes, yes. I was so looking it's, at that. It's coming. What are some of the struggles do you think that women still face in college and in the workforce? I, you know, I, I think that so much progress has been made. Let's, uh -huh. you know, first of all, let's celebrate yes, the fact that absolutely. so much is, doubt. Is, is better in terms of conditions and respect and role models. Okay. You know, I'm sure that when you know you started out as a physician and I yes, started out, absolutely. there were very few women role models out there to, to be seen. But now I think there are many. Mm -hmm. So that that's encouraging. And I also mm -hmm. think what's encouraging is that our young women today have mm -hmm. so many uh, supports and they're and such great self-confidence. We have the mm -hmm. Center for Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership on campus okay. and there are a number of C mm -hmm. what we call Seawell scholars. Um, that, that come in every year, at least 20 of them. And okay. those women are really dedicated to making sure that they develop the skills that they need to be entrepreneurial leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just a lot of support out there. So I think, I, I think that in some ways things are, are really much better. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. there are certainly areas where women are desperately under either funded or represented. And, and the boardroom mm -hmm. is one, venture capital is another, you know, investment banking is a third. Sure. So, you know, there's a lot of places where there's still huge scope, you know, for, for development. But what I'm seeing now is that women are demanding reforms in the way that companies work. So it's not just that the women have to change themselves now mm -hmm. to conform to these standards that, mm -hmm. of companies that were created by and for men in the long run, you know. Sure. Sure. So I think now women are reaching a point where they're saying, no, you know, these are the, this is the way I'd like to do business. This is the way, you know, I'd like, uh, you know, our, our benefits to be structured, our work life to be structured. And I also think that entrepreneurship gives women a lot of flexibility. They can mm -hmm. create companies with the culture that they want. 
and lead those companies. Absolutely. So switching gears a little mm -hmm. bit, you have two children. Mm -hmm. How do you manage your work and family life so well? Any tips for us? Uh, <laughs> Well, my uh, my children are my my life. They're they, you know when everything is good with them, then then I'm a very happy person. I'm very fortunate that they are fully grown now, so they okay. are not uh, not uh, part. Unfortunately, not part of my daily life, but they are part of what sustains me. My my son is in uh, New York now. Okay. He works for a company that actually does a great deal of business uh, in India. It's called Acumen. Okay. Uh, they invest in off-grid solar and sustainable okay. foods. So I'm okay. very proud of him and the choices very that he's made. Too. Yeah, very interesting. Uh -huh. And my daughter is in her final months at, at Harvard, okay. and so I'm very proud of her as well. We have no idea what she's going to do next, but. I'm 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 happy in whatever she chooses. She is a great role model. Thank you. Now you have been enormously successful in politics, in education. What are some of your future plans and goals? Mm. Well, <laughs> right now I'm very focused on the hundredth uh, anniversary yes, of Babson College. Yeah, absolutely. So so when we reach our centennial. In 2019, and we have celebrated all year long as much uh -huh. as we possibly can. Then I'll think about the future. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that brings me to the last part, which is called yes. the rapid response. Mm. So tell us. It's just a short answer of whatever comes to your head. Who is your role model? My mother. Your mother. And what's your biggest strength? Probably resilience and okay. the ability to forgive and forget. Okay. And your weakness. <laughs> mm, I always think the best of everyone until I'm Sounds very much proven the opposite. <laughs> so. Sounds like a strength. Oh, yeah. oh no, it can, it can quite be a weakness. Okay. What is the best advice that you receive from your parents? Mm. I think to hold to your values okay. over everything else. And what's the best advice you have given as a parent to your kids? Mm. <laughs> Probably just to be nice. Okay. To and be kind. Just to be kind. Yeah. What's your most favorite travel destination? Right now, actually for the last 10 years, it's been Cuba. Really? And it's fascinating to see uh -huh. it evolve right now. I'm very interested okay. in their future. That's interesting. Your favorite hobby? Mm. <laughs> uh, probably travel. Travel? Probably travel, okay. yeah. Okay. That uh, brings me to the last question. Mm. What does Carrie Healy do for fun? Ah, <laughs> I see my friends. Okay. I see my friends and I cook. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, thank you thank so you. much. It was such a pleasure to meet you. Thank, thank you. you.